Holy fuck. Deadpool and Wolverine smashed box office records this past weekend. But before we talk about that, we're going to go back and look at last week. Since I didn't have a show out, I was feeling under the weather. And it wasn't good, so I didn't have the energy to make a show last week. So we're going to just check in on what happened then before moving on to this past weekend. I'm Adam. This is Does It Hold Up, Box Office Edition, where every Tuesday we take a look at what happened at the weekend's box office and kind of round up all those numbers and also take a flashback to an older movie to see how well it held up. Let's go ahead and jump into what were the top 10 movies last weekend, July 19th to July 21st. Twisters was the number one movie of that weekend. It was new to the chart. It was the big opener. It made $81.2 million in its opening weekend. I saw it that weekend. I thought it was a pretty good movie. I thought maybe there was some problems with it that most people are kind of just brushing under the rug, but $81 million is nothing to laugh at. In second place was Despicable Me 4 with another $24 million. Inside Out was in third place in its sixth week with another $12.8 million. Long Legs holds decently in its second week. Only a 47% drop. It makes another $12 million. Quiet Place Day 1 in its fourth week comes in fifth place with another $6.3 million. I know I'm running through these numbers pretty quick here, but you know we want to get to the numbers from this past weekend, so we're going to go through them pretty quick. In 6th place was Fly Me to the Moon in its second week with a really big drop of 65%. It only made $3.3 million. Extremely disappointing. I thought it was a rather entertaining and a rather good movie. Just probably not a movie a lot of people wanted to see, especially with something like Twisters in theaters. In 7th place was Bad Boys Ride or Die with another $2.6 million in its 7th week. Maxine is in 8th place with just a... Just about $820,000 in its third week. The Bike Riders comes back into the top 10 here with 722000 It had an 81% increase because it gained a few theaters that weekend. And Horizon and American Saga Chapter 1 rounds out that weekend's top 10 with 682000 Two movies fell out of the top 10 last two weekends ago. The Lion King re-release after just one week, and Sound of Hope, the story of Possum Trot, after two weeks. Okay, let's get to the main event here. What happened this past weekend at the box office? Because it was insane. Deadpool and Wolverine broke records. Not the highest opening weekend of all time, but it is the highest opening weekend for an R-rated movie. It goes to show that a little anticipation and trusting people to make a movie that fans are going going to want to see can and should pay off. So are movies back? Are we so back after this? I don't know. But it's really fun to talk about. In first place this past weekend at the box office was Deadpool and Wolverine. It was the big release. And what was that record-breaking number that it had? $211 $211 million. That's crazy. Crazy. In second place was Twisters in its second weekend with another $35 million, Only a 57% drop, which is extremely good when it was competing against something as big as Deadpool and Wolverine. And you're going to hear me say that quite a few times, competing against Deadpool and Wolverine, because it did affect a lot of what happened at the box office this weekend. So far, Twisters has made over $150 million in just two weeks. Very impressive. In third place was Despicable Me 4 in its fourth weekend, with another $14.5 million, a 40% drop, but it's creeping up to $300 million here domestically. That's awesome. Not a good movie, but, you know, at least people are going back to the theaters. In fourth place was Inside Out 2 in its seventh week, with another $8.6 million, only a 33% drop. And it is giving Barbie a run for its money. Barbie was the big grocer of 2023, with about $636 million. Well, Inside Out 2 in just seven weeks is now at 614, a little under, 614 million. So that's going to be a race to kind of follow. In fifth place is Long Legs, yet again in its third week, holding extremely well, 
$6.8 million, a 43% drop. It's made $58 million domestically so far. And this is a movie that came out of nowhere. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody was hyped for it. And yet somehow it's doing extremely well. I can't tell you why though. Saw that movie over the past week and it was good. I don't know if it was that good. In sixth place is A Quiet Place Day 1 in its fifth week with another 3.1 million, a 51% drop, 134 million overall. Bad Boys Ride or Die is still going pretty strong. It's in seventh place in its eighth week with another 1.3 million, a 50% drop, but it's just under 192 million domestically, the highest of the Bad Boy movies. In 8th place is another new movie to the list called The Fabulous Four. In its opening weekend, it made just over $1 million. Fly Me to the Moon in its third week has a massive 77% drop. Makes just $768,000, bringing its grand total right now to $19.1 million. And there's a really big reason for that. Deadpool and Wolverine. And it's not just that people were going to see that movie. It's the fact that that movie came in and stole 2,000 theaters away from Fly Me to the Moon. They lost over 2,000 theaters this past weekend. They were playing in just a handful of theaters across the nation, and that's what happens. So imagine if it still had that 2,000 theaters. It might have made a couple of million, moved up higher on this list, but you know, Deadpool and Wolverine, you gotta make way for it. And in 10th place this past weekend was Maxine with a 72% drop in its fourth week for just $230,000. It's made 14.6 domestically. That movie, I feel like had a lot of hype and just nobody's going to see it. Let me know in the comments below. Have you seen Maxine? Is it really worth watching? Or are these low numbers exactly what you expected? Two movies fell out of the top 10 this past weekend. It was Bike Riders, after jumping back into the top 10 for one week, it falls out again. And Horizon and American Saga Chapter 1 falls out after four weeks. I know it feels like I'm running through these charts pretty fast, and that's because I am. Because I have two things that I want to talk about a little later in the show, and I don't want it to run too long. So let's go ahead and move straight into the 2023 versus 2024 box office weekend-to-weekend -weekend comparison chart. Last weekend, when Twisters came out, we got absolutely trounced here in 2024 because it was Barbie and Oppenheimer's opening weekend. So total last year for that weekend, 2023 made $310 million compared to just the 148 in 2024. But there's some good news because this past weekend, the 30th weekend of the calendar year, 2023 made 214 million, a rather respectable number, but not good enough to beat the 284 million that 2024 brought in, led pretty much entirely by Deadpool and Wolverine. So, Barbie, you did really well last year, but you know Deadpool and Wolverine. That's all I'm saying. It's nice to see that we've kind of bounced back. This chart is much closer than I think a lot of people expected. You can see that 2024 is never that far behind 2023, but 2024 has only won eight of the 30 weekends. So that's something that needs to continue if we feel like we're going to make as much money last year, this year, as we did last year. It's an interesting thing to follow. Let's go ahead and go right into the top 10 movies so far of 2024, and there's a lot of movement since the last time we saw this chart. In first place is Inside Out 2 with that 613 million. Nothing's touching that right now. Despicable Me 4 moves up one spot into second place with 291.3 million. Doom Part 2 falls one spot to third with 282 million. Deadpool and Wolverine jumps onto the chart after just one weekend with that $211 million, it takes fourth place. That is, I don't know any other way to say it, but impressive. In fifth place is Godzilla Kong, the new empire with that $196 million. It falls that one spot. Kung Fu Panda falls one spot to sixth. Bad Boys, Ride or Die also falls one spot to seventh. And Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes didn't want to be left out, so it also fell one spot to eighth. 
And a new movie jumps into the chart here at number nine, and it's Twisters with 154.6 million. It will not stay in ninth place for long. I'm assuming after this upcoming weekend, it's going to move up at least one spot. I don't think it has another 40 million in it over this week to maybe beat Bad Boys, especially since that one's still making money. So we're going to kind of see where that one lies. And in 10th place is A Quiet Place, day one, falling two spots with that 134 million. And two movies fell out of the 2024 top 10. It was Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, and If. All right, let's do our flashback. This is where we look into the past at a movie that has already come and gone, but we take a look at how profitable it was in the theatrical experience. Did it make money for the studio or did it lose the studio money? Or just how much? So we went all the way back to 1996 to take a look at Twister, the movie that inspired the big hit of last weekend. Domestically, in week one, Twister brought in $57.9 million. The studio kept that 60%, so about $34.8 million. Domestic week two, the movie made $49 million. The studio kept 27 of that. Domestic week three, plus just the rest of its run, the movie brought in $134.6 million. Studios only got to keep 50% of that, but that's still a rather good $67 million. Internationally, the movie did phenomenally well. With another $253 million, the studio only kept 40% of that, so they put, you know, $101 million in their pocket from just international release. And it did release in China, where it made $630,000 in U.S. currency. Studio kept 22.5% of that, which was only $141,000, but we got it included on the list because it does exist. The budget for the movie was $88 million. Marketing, I put this at a hefty $110 million because they had one of the biggest marketing campaigns of any movie before it came out of all time. They spent so much money marketing this movie. Twister stuff was everywhere. And then when they realized the movie was gaining a little bit of traction, they dumped even more money into the marketing. So this is a conservative number here. 110 million. It could have been more, but I feel like that's good. The movie grossed $495.7 million worldwide. After the theaters took their cut, the movie netted $230.5 million. We subtract the budget and the marketing from that, and we see that Twister had an estimated theatrical profit of $32.5 million. That is one of the most beloved movies of all time. It is still talked about. It got a pseudo-sequel many, 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 many years later. And it really wasn't that profitable at theaters. But I bet it made a ton of money on home video and a ton more money in rights on basic cable. So that's where it's all at. Okay. That's it for all the charts this week, but I do want to talk two very specific things. I saw Deadpool and Wolverine over its opening weekend, and I was going to do a full review for it, but I realized eh, most people are doing reviews. The whole internet is kind of just inundated with reviews and Deadpool and Wolverine stuff. So I thought I'd just tack a couple thoughts here at the end of the video. I'll try to avoid spoilers as much as possible, and I apologize in advance if I do let one slip. Deadpool and Wolverine is a good movie. It is fun. It keeps in line with the other two Deadpool movies. It has that spirit. But there is just something missing. After I saw the movie, I was talking to my partner about what we thought. And I realized that it's like going to McDonald's. You're going to eat the food and you're going to like it while you're doing it. But afterwards, you're probably still hungry. It just didn't sit right. There's something missing in Deadpool and Wolverine. And I don't know exactly what it is. But it's there. And I think one of the biggest problems I had with this movie is it lacked a lot of humor. Except from the, hey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge type jokes. The fourth wall breaking in your face. Hey, did you notice this thing? type of jokes. The other Deadpool movies had jokes layered into the actual story. It didn't always rely on Deadpool looking directly into the camera to be like, and that's the punchline. 
Now, does that still work in Deadpool and Wolverine? Absolutely. But it feels like that's the only time they're really trying to capture the Deadpool spirit. Seeing Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine was absolutely amazing, and I think the way they bring him back does work really well. But at the end of the day, it's like, why? Did we have to bring him back? Especially in the movie when we talk about this new Wolverine that gets brought back being the worst Wolverine of all. But we're just told that. We're never shown that. This movie does a lot of telling you what happened or telling you what's going to happen or even currently telling you what's happening without showing you what's happening. I thought movies were a show don't tell medium, but Deadpool apparently didn't get the memo. I had a great time watching this movie. Don't think any of this negative is like, I'm hating on this movie. It's a really fun movie. I just don't know if it's the savior of comic book movies that a lot of other people are trying to make it out to be. And that's why I just kind of wanted to talk it through. I think the villain was extremely weak. I wish that the main villain in the movie would have just been Paradox from the TVA and we completely got rid of Cassandra Nova because her story didn't really make sense. And... Keeping in line with the whole theme of Deadpool, him trying to fight a corporate take guy who's trying to take over his business would have been the ultimate F.U. joke to Disney, to Fox, to all of those types of people. And it would have worked so well in the Deadpool universe that it's super weird they threw her in. All the cameos worked extremely well. Except for the fact that I must have been in a very soft audience because... I was the only one cheering. I was the only one laughing. Well, besides my partner, she was having a great time as well. But nobody else seemed to care when all of these amazing cameos showed up in the movie. And that kind of hurt my experience a little bit, is this movie gave audiences exactly what they wanted, and yet didn't really get the reaction, at least in my showing, that I think they were hoping for. And it just goes to show, like, not all movies are going to play to all audiences, but this one's just a little bit weird. I wish it would have been more. Okay, speaking of cameos and bringing people back, there's one other piece of information that I want to talk about. Marvel had a really big presence at San Diego Comic-Con this past week, couple days, and some big news came out of it. And I want to talk about one in particular, but I just don't know where to start because I tried to post my feelings about it on... Facebook, on some of our social media, and got a lot of backlash, and that's okay. People are allowed to have their opinions, which I think I'm entitled to as well, which is super weird when people attack other people's opinions. Like, it's okay that we disagree. Can we just have a general conversation about why we disagree instead of being attacked? People called me all sorts of horrible names over on Facebook because I had an opinion about Robert Downey Jr. returning to the MCU, but not as Iron Man and Tony Stark, as Doctor Doom, and not the what-if Tony Stark Doctor Doom. He's going to be playing Victor Von Doom. But he's already Iron Man. He, we already know this actor as a character, the character that this entire universe was built upon. He helped create everything that's happening in the Marvel Universe. And now we're bringing him back to play a completely different character, and it doesn't really seem to make sense. I want it to work. But at the end of the day, there's a thousand other great actors you could have cast in this role, and it would have been amazing. Killian Murphy would have made an excellent Doctor Doom. Like, he should have been the choice. If you're going to get an Oscar winner from Oppenheimer, it's not Robert Downey Jr. I can tell you that much. And then to bring the Russo brothers back to be like, direct the next two Avengers movies, it just all reeked of desperation. It was the idea of, our movies haven't been really doing that well at the theaters. What's the easiest way to get people back? Give them the things that they remember. Nostalgia. It's been like four years. How much nostalgia can there be for this? And I think a lot of people still have their Iron Man rose-colored glasses on right now because they're just excited that Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man, is back. But he's not Iron Man. In fact, he's a completely new character. Now, if he had come back as Tony Stark, as Iron Man, and they announced that, and then in Avengers Doomsday, which is 
the name of the movie now, instead of Kang Dynasty, they changed it to Doomsday. If he would have come back as Iron Man, Tony Stark, in that movie, and we watched him become evil and turn into a version of Doctor Doom, okay, maybe that could work. But to announce that he's playing Victor Von Doom is just a really weird casting choice that I just think is Marvel giving up. I think it's a terrible decision. And the reason why the Russo brothers work so well directing uh, Infinity War and Endgame is because they had already directed The Winter Soldier, a highly regarded movie, and Civil War, another highly regarded movie. They weren't just coming in at the end of the phases to try to put together the team and tell a complete story. They had their hand in the creation of the entire story. So bringing them in only to do these two, they're really good directors. I think. Because the movies they've made outside of the MCU, like Cherry or The Gray Man, neither was very good. So I'm not sure they're good directors on their own. Maybe they only work within the Marvel system, which is okay. That's what we want them for. But I think they should be hand in, having their hands in maybe some other projects first before just handing over the reins to the two biggest movies coming and seeing how it goes. So I think it was just some weird decisions. And the fact that everybody was super stoked for the Fantastic Four movie, it's everything, everybody's been talking about it for years. We want the Fantastic Four. And at Comic-Con, they gave a preview of that movie. It was part of the trailer. And everybody was kind of stoked for it. And then it all got overshadowed by the Robert Downey Jr. announcement. And it was a weird announcement. It was weirdly played. And unfortunately, sure, he may be a great actor, but he's the wrong choice for this character. That's all. I'm not sure what Marvel's doing, but <laughs> I can smell the desperation from here. Let me know in the comments below what you think about any of the box office stuff. Did you like Deadpool and Wolverine? And what do you think of Robert Downey Jr. being cast as Victor Von Doom? I'll be back again next week with another box office roundup. And we'll be releasing a few videos in the meantime as well. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And you can also click the video on the screen to watch more from me right now. Until I see you next time, just remember to be good to yourself, be kind to others, and keep watching movies. <laughs>